In this video, I'd like to show you how you can use area lights in Maya to create realistic lighting effects. Area lights simulate the effect of giving off light from a large surface area. And that allows you to get a soft light effect similar to what you would achieve on a photo shoot if you used a soft box to light your subject. I'll demonstrate some of the settings and show you how we can control the quality when you use area lights in Maya. If you search the internet for the words softbox and portrait, you'll see some examples of how softbox lighting setups are used in portrait photography. And one of the signature looks that you get when you use a softbox in portrait photography is you get these soft shadows on the side of the face. So you can see here how the roll off on the edge of that shadow is very soft because it's a large diffuse light source. And I've got a website here that describes how softboxes work. It's uh, photoflex.com. And this particular article is describing how soft boxes are designed and the kind and quality of light that you get when you work with a soft box lighting setup. And so what I'd like to show you is how you can achieve that soft box look when you use area lights in Maya. So I'm going to switch back here to Maya and I've got this polygon head here and I've set up a camera that I'm going to render this frame through. And when I render that image, you can see the default light set up here in Maya. And what I'll do is I'll create an area light and add that to my scene. So I'll come up here to the pull down menu and choose create lights and area light. And that will put an area light in the origin of my scene. And the first thing I'm going to do is scale that up so we can get a good look at it. So I'll scale it up to a resolution of four and then I'll move it out in front of the subject and off to the side and raise it up slightly so that we can get uh, a good angle on her head. And now I'd like to aim the light directly at the subject. So I'm going to press T on the keyboard to enter target mode. And now I will tumble the view around to the top. And by selecting this target aim handle, I'm going to try to put that right in the middle of her head here. So I'll look at that in the top view and then tumble down so that it's also visible in the front view. So it's roughly in the center of her head there. And now that the aim target is in the middle of her head, what that allows me to do is to move the light itself. And no matter where I move the light in the scene, that will always be aimed directly at her head. So that's a nice technique to be able to focus the light on your subject, no matter where you move it. So I can demonstrate some of the properties that are unique to area lights without even rendering a frame here. I'm going to make sure that viewport 2.0 is enabled in my render view. And then in lighting, I'll say use all lights. I'll also turn on shadows. And that allows you to preview some of the effects you get with area lights right in your perspective window. And so now I can demonstrate some of the unique properties of area lights. If I come in here and select this light and I'll hit R on the keyboard to switch it to scaling mode. If I scale this light down, you can see immediately that the scale is affecting the intensity of the light on the subject. The other thing that affects the intensity of the light is the distance from the subject to the light. So if I press on the W key and move the light further away, you can also see that the distance is affecting the brightness of the light on the subject. And then finally, if I open up the attribute editor for that light and change the intensity here, you can also see how that will affect the brightness of the subject. Knowing that those three parameters affect the quality of light you get when you use an area light, I'm now going to try to simulate the effect that you would get when you use a softbox in a portrait photography setup. So I'll switch back to target mode by pressing T on the keyboard, and then I'll move the light up a little bit so we get a more of a Rembrandt setup here with the shadow falling on the cheek. And now I can render this view by looking through my camera and have a look and see what that looks like. So here in the render view, you can see the intensity on the screen left side of the face is too hot and there are no shadows being cast by this light. So I'll switch back to the attribute editor to control some of those settings. The first thing I'm going to work on is shadows and I'll turn on depth map shadows. And now I can render the image again. So now we've got shadows turned on, but you can see that they're getting a hard edge of that shadow. And what I'd like to do is soften that. So I can do that by switching back to the attribute editor and increasing the filter size for that particular light. So I'll bring it up to eight and render the scene again to see how that affects the quality of the shadows. Here you can see the difference by increasing the filter size to eight is essentially blurring that depth map and giving us a nice soft edge on our character. And now I'll start to work on the intensity of the light here on the screen left side of the face. 
And because I want to control the intensity of the light as if it was in a real photo shoot, I'm going to enable the decay on this particular light. So I'll come back here to the attribute editor of the light and scroll to the top where it says decay rate. In that drop down menu, I'm going to enable quadratic decay, and that's going to affect the intensity of the light. Quadratic decay in Maya is designed to simulate the way light behaves in the real world. And I can show you that here if I switch over to the internet. There's a website here called Simple Cameras, and what they're describing here is the inverse square law of light. And the idea here is that when you double the distance from your light to your subject, you actually reduce the intensity of the light by four times. So that reduction of four times the intensity is where they get the root quad from, four being quad, and so that's where they get quadratic decay from. And that's a common law in physics, and they've included that here in Maya. So with quadratic decay enabled here, I'll now render the scene again, and we can see the results of that effect. And what you'll notice here is a black screen because when quadratic decay is turned on, the intensity of the light is no longer strong enough to reach the subject. So to make the light bright enough, we have to go back and increase the intensity. So I'll change that to 50 and render the scene again and see how that looks. So now we're starting to get some of the intensity back, but if you notice also, there's a hot spot here right above her screen left eye where the intensity of the light is much brighter as it falls off towards the edges of her face. And in order to simulate the look we get with a soft box, I'm gonna increase this so that it's a more evenly lit along the side of her face. So to achieve that effect, I'll switch back to Maya. And I'm going to scale the size of that light up to cover more surface area on the side of her face. And I'll render that through our camera. And what you should notice is I'm now getting a more even lighting from the top to the bottom of her head, but that the intensity is now too bright because I scaled the light up. So to control that effect, I'll go back to the intensity setting and dial that down. So I'll try reducing the intensity down to 30 and render the frame again and see how that looks. And what you'll notice here is that we're getting nice even lighting on the screen left side of the face because we scaled up that area light and increased that surface area that we're projecting the light from. And we're still getting a nice fall off across the face and smooth edges on our shadows as well. So those are some of the techniques you can use in Maya to control your area lights and simulate the effects you would get when using a softbox on a photo shoot.